In this video, we're going to talk about the course syllabus for intermediate algebra. Uh, course syllabus is the document that contains our policies and, um, you know, sort of a summary of the course. Um, and so we'll kind of go over this at the beginning of the semester so that you guys know what to expect. Um, at the, now, this document you can actually uh, access on eLearning. Um, and it's under the content tab and then you click on uh, students start here module and then you'll find the course syllabus in that module um, okay so the first thing is you have my information my name and my contact information very important part here is that um, my office hours for this course are going to be Mondays and Wednesdays uh, from 1 to 2 I plan to be in my office on campus, um, which I didn't write on here. I think it's in there somewhere, but it's actually, oh, it is right here. It's G205. Um, and so I'll be in my office during that time. If you want to meet face-to-face, -face, we can try to work that out. Um, I know there's a bit of a process to get on campus for you guys, but um, I should be here most of the time during that time period. Um, if you could let me know, though, that you're planning to come in, uh, you know, send me an email ahead of time, that would be helpful to make sure that I will be here uh, for that time. Uh, if face-to-face -face doesn't work, I'll also, I plan to be available via Zoom or email during that time, so you can email me questions. Um, if you would like to participate in a Zoom meeting so we can actually interact um, uh, virtually, uh, that will work. Um, and so I'm going to try to do all of my intermediate algebra classes together during the Monday, Wednesday time period, uh, so that, uh, we can do it all in one zoom meeting and whoever wants to be there for that session, um, can be there and I can answer questions basically. So it'll all be similar content because it's all the same class. So you may not, um, I have several sections of this course. And so you may not all be in the same section, but you'll be covering the same material. Um, okay, so that's the a possibility for Zoom. But again, email me um, so that I know that you're interested in that Zoom session and I can uh, send out a link um, if anyone is interested. Uh, otherwise, just feel free to email me. I'll, <clears throat> I'll try to keep that one to two time slot available. Um, where I'll be checking my email regularly and trying to respond as quickly as possible there. Um, you can email me anytime, any day. Um, I just can't guarantee I'm going to get to it right away unless it's during that time period, and then I'm going to do my best to, to uh, uh, respond as quickly as possible there. Uh, I also will be available on Fridays via email, so I'll try to keep the one to two time slot available on Fridays as well. Um, for all my classes, I don't plan to do a Zoom or face-to-face because -face, I may not be on campus on Fridays. And I'm leaving that open for all of my classes, not just intermediate algebra. And so I don't really want to do a Zoom session unless I have to um, if I get enough people for the same class that are interested. So, um, okay, there's also some course information. Now, don't worry about this uh, section number I have on this syllabus um, may not be the section number for your course. Again, I have, I think I have four, maybe three, three sections of intermediate algebra this semester. And so, um, I'm using the same video for all of those, uh, all of the intermediate algebra sections. And so if that section number doesn't match yours, that's okay. Uh, it's essentially the same syllabus. So, uh, moving down here to the textbook. Uh, required textbook, um, you are going to be required to purchase a My Math Lab access code. Now, My Math Lab is the online homework system that we use. It is separate from your e-learning course. Okay, so there's really two main courses that you guys are going to be access or two main uh, websites. I'm sorry that you're going to be accessing this semester. Your e-learning, which is what Delta provides, um, that's the main structure for the course. And then uh, the My Math Lab, which is your homework, your online homework. Um, you will need to, to purchase that access code. It is a requirement. You can get it either through the Delta College Bookstore or you can purchase it directly through the Pearson website. Pearson is the publisher for the textbook that we use. 
Um, you can, it is recommended, but, but optional. It is not required to purchase a hard copy of the Intermediate Algebra textbook. Uh, it is by the author, whose name is Blitzer, uh, and it is the eighth edition that we're on right now. It's just changing editions this year. So um, you won't probably find any used copies of this because it's a brand new textbook. Um, so you don't have to purchase a hard copy, but you can if you would like to. Um, I personally like to have the hard copy because um, uh, because I just I don't really like to read through books or flip pages electronically. I'd rather do it on paper. Um, but it is more expensive. It is heavier to carry around. You do have access to the textbook on my math lab. It's an electronic version. Okay, so that's why you, you don't have to purchase this one. Um, if you prefer to have a paper copy of the book, though, feel free to purchase it. Um, again, it is optional because you have access to it electronically if that will suffice. Uh, you also need a graphing calculator. Very important part of this course. The graphing calculator that I tend to use for this course is the TI-84+. Plus. Um, it is not the only calculator that uh, will work for this course. There's a variety of other Texas Instruments and Casio calculators that will work. Um, however, uh, you need to stay away from the TI-89 and some of the TI Inspires. Uh, if they contain something called a computer algebra system, uh, you have to stay away from those because basically they do too much. Um, if they have this CAS designation on, usually on the front of the calculator somewhere, uh, you would not be allowed to use that. If you have any questions about whether your calculator will work or not, um, you can email me or send me a photo of the uh, front of the calculator and I can pretty quickly determine whether that will work or not. Okay, so... Um, the next thing I want to talk about is the grades, um, how the grades work in this course. I do keep all of your grades on e-learning, um, and they'll be updated there in the gradebook. Um, even your my math lab homework grades, I will transfer to the e-learning course in the gradebook there. So you'll have everything accessible and summarized there. Um, this course is split up into four parts, the grades are. Uh, you have three tests and this homework or assignment category, okay? Um, the three tests are just, you know, they're just a single assignment. Um, but the uh, the assignments category will have a large number of assignments in it. It will contain all of your My Math Lab homework. It will contain any other participation um, assignments or worksheets or quizzes or videos, anything else that I have you guys do, discussion boards maybe, I don't even know. Um, I leave it very open and vague uh, because um, it just changes by the course and it changes by the day, uh, whatever I assign. So all, the, all that other stuff just gets crammed into this assignments category and it together weighs as much as a test, essentially, okay? Um, there is no cumulative final in this class, all right? Um, the final grades uh, will be calculated using this scale uh, or assigned using the scale. And I do round everything, uh, where does it say, to the nearest tenth of a percent. So that's why I have everything to one decimal place there. Okay, so everything gets rounded uh, to that place. Um, general information, just some, uh, some information about late assignments. Um, I typically do not accept late work. Um, the homework on my math lab will pretty much always be due on a Sunday night at 11.59 p.m. Uh, and you'll have plenty of time to complete those assignments, so we shouldn't really have any issues with late, late work. Um, and so I don't do much with late work. Uh, if there are other assignments like quizzes or worksheets or other things here, um, you know, I'll have deadlines for those and there should again be plenty of time to get those done. So um, 
so we don't accept late work. However, I know that there are going to be times where you can't get something done or you forget or a deadline or something. Those things do happen. And so um, I have a system at the end of the semester where I kind of drop some of those things so that you can miss approximately 10% of the points and not be hurt by it. Um, I don't really drop the assignments uh, like some instructors would drop your lowest grades. The reason for that is if you actually earned points on those assignments, you would lose them, and I want you to keep those points. And so I count them as extra credit at the end of the semester rather than dropping them. So you'll see it here. It says, um, you know, this, uh, some of the points in the assignment category will count as bonus points at the end of the semester. This is similar to dropping low grades. I do not set a predetermined number of points, but I anticipate approximately 10% will be counted as bonus. So in other words, you could miss 10% of the points in that assignments category um, and still get 100% in that category. All right. Uh, and if you did all of the assignments and got all of the points throughout the semester, um, the sentence here explains that you could have up to 111% in that category. So there is an opportunity to get some extra credit there. Um, it's really the only opportunity to get extra credit because down in this paragraph, I explain that I don't typically give separate extra credit assignments. Um, makeup policy, uh, there are three tests. Um, there's really no makeups because uh, you have an entire day to do the test. Um, they're going to be available online. Uh, you take them at home at your own leisure. You're going to have, uh, they'll be available in the morning and then you got to submit them probably by 1159 or so the same day. Um, so you're going to have the whole day to do it. There's not really any reason that you would miss them. Uh, so I don't typically do any late or early tests on those. Um, and the dates are already predetermined. I'll show you those in a few minutes. Okay. Um, Another thing, the e-learning site, do make sure that you are checking that on a very regular basis. You'll have your course syllabus, uh, your videos, any other assignments that are not in my math lab. All of your grades, a uh, variety of things will be in that e-learning course, uh, course site. And uh, you're going to want to make sure that you're checking that very regularly. Um, also make sure that you're checking your email, your Delta email very regularly because I tend to communicate a lot. I send out lots of updates. Um, I let you know when things are due. I let you know when my update is the grade so you can check them, um, all sorts of things. So please do make sure that you are checking uh, your email, your Delta email specifically on at least a daily basis, but I tend to do it way more than that, multiple times a day, okay? Um, also, the course schedule, um, you can see down here, I have it separated by weeks. Um, and I'm sure when you guys are looking at this on your computer, it's not going to be broken up. I don't have any page separations. It's all one nice fluid document, so it'll look a little nicer. But I have it separated by weeks. These go Monday through Sunday. And so the uh, what, what, you, what we cover each week, the sections for the book, um, are going to be here in the middle column and they the homework in my math lab is always going to be due on the Sunday night uh, listed in that week okay so sections 2 4 to 3 2 will be due on Sunday September 20th at 1159 p.m. they're already set for you in you uh, in my math lab they should be all up and ready to go so you can work on them whenever you're ready um, the only exception is these the first uh, first week of homework, I'm going to make due on the second Sunday instead of the first Sunday because there's always some delay in, in some people getting signed up and there's always some bugs to work out uh, in that whole process at the beginning. So I give a, a week of buffer there at the beginning. Um, I would not, however, wait until that second week to do both weeks worth of stuff because that will be a little bit overwhelming probably and um, you want to try to keep your uh, Labor Day weekend there as free as possible. So um, anyway, so that's how that's set up. Then on towards the end of the schedule, you will see three tests. Uh, test one will be on Monday, October 5th. Test two will be on Wednesday, November 11th. 
and test three will be on Wednesday, December 16th. Those three tests are pretty much set in stone because you guys don't have to come on campus. We don't really have to worry about snow days or anything weird like that. Um, it would have to be something very strange and out of the ordinary to have to move those test days. So I would lock them in on your calendars, make sure that's just about the only thing you have to do those days. Um, you can, I mean, obviously you can do other things. The test should only take about two hours, I assume. Um, and I'll talk more about the test as those days come, but, uh, make sure that you have a sufficient amount of time free on those three days. Uh, to do those tests. Um, they are going to be taken online. You can do them at home, uh, but you will, you will need to uh, print them out. And, and uh, well, I guess I'll, I'll explain those details more as we come to those days. Um, okay, so you can kind of see where, how the class is all structured then. Uh, the only thing I didn't really mention in here, and I, and I probably should give uh, give notice to is an attendance policy because we are meeting online and not face to face attendance is a little bit strange. Um, I can't just take attendance each day and you count the number of days you don't come and you know, that sort of thing. Instead, what I'm going to do is, um, I'm just going to keep track of your virtual attendance. I'll call it. Um, and that is just, um, you know, the, the videos you're watching, I keep track of all the videos you're watching, the homework you're doing, the, when you're logging into e-learning, that sort of thing. Um, because it's all electronic, it records everything and I have access to it all. So, um, so if I notice any of you are not watching the videos or not doing the homework, I count that as your participation in your attendance. And so if that goes on for a week or two weeks, um, I, I may drop you from the course uh, for lack of attendance. And so if there is some reason that you need to take some time away from the course, if you get ill or a, a loved one passes away or something happens where you need to take some time away, make sure to talk to me and I can work with you, getting you caught up and keep keeping you caught up. Um, but I need to know what's going on. Otherwise you may end up getting dropped from the course. Okay. So that's a, a big thing to keep in mind. Um, you know, if you guys have any questions on this, make sure that you send me email um, and I will do my best to respond in a timely way. Thank you.